Hello everyone, my name is Wes Merelda, you can call me Wes, and welcome to Wonder Wes Gaming. It's about that time! World of Warcraft's newest expansion, Dragonflight, is nearly upon us, and with it comes all sorts of fresh new locales, quests, raids, dragon riding. But you know what we really get into around here. For me, the most exciting part of any new WoW content is the Battle Pets. And Dragonflight comes stocked with almost a hundred fresh, shiny new pets to add to our collections. So let's explore the wide variety of new pets we'll be seeing on the Dragon Isles. With Phase 1 of the Dragonflight pre-patch, a few new collection achievements have been added to the game, which brings us four new pets. The Crystalline Mini Monster is rewarded when you obtain 1,250 unique battle pets. The Secretive Frog Duck is awarded when you achieve 1,500 pets. You'll get the Violet Violence pet when you hit 1,750 pets. And finally, for getting a whopping 2,000 unique battle pets, you'll receive Mr. Muskoxiles, but we're not likely to see the top collectors getting this little ox calf friend until the end of Dragonflight, or even beyond. Once the Dragonflight expansion goes live, two more achievement pets will become available. Lady Feathersworth is the reward for completing the Family Battler of the Dragon Isles achievement, which can be obtained by successfully battling all of the Dragon Isles pet tamers and elites with teams made up of each unique pet family. And then there's the Bronze Racing Enthusiast, which is rewarded when you complete all of the dragon races across the Isles at a silver level or higher. That's confusing, right? A bronze whelp for a silver level win? Yeah, that's confusing. At launch, Dragonflight brings us four new zones we can all explore, each of them stocked with a variety of new wild pets to find, battle, and capture to add to our collections. Some of these pets are found just wandering around the zones, some of them are rarer and hold up in only a few distinct places, and a few are even so obscure that they require special, hidden interactions to even see them. Here's a look at the wild pets you can find throughout the Dragon Isles, along with some of the fantastic new music coming to us in Dragonflight.
As I mentioned earlier, a few of these wild pets have special circumstances or actions required to make them visible for capture. In the Azure Span, the chalk shell turtle requires picking up some turtle bait from Lani near Iskara. Then there's White Whisker, who is so bright you'll need to pick up some snow glare sunglasses to spot it. You can pick these up from Nuptuck, a little Tuscar child who's stationed near an icy lake between the Azure Archives and Camp Nowhere. And then, the pale baby Vorquin requires a quick peek at the Magical Creature Manual, which is casually set on the floor of one of the open-air buildings at Camp Antonitis. In the Onaran Plains, the Quackcester is hiding out amongst ancestors of the Maruk Centaur in the Primordial Vale area, and can only be found by using the Essence of Awakening, which you can acquire once you hit Renown Level 7 with the Maruk Centaur Clan. Finally, there are four storm-touched wild battle pets, which appear to only be found while the Primalists are invading the Dragon Isles with their elemental storms. There's the storm-touched Stomper in the Waking Shores, the storm-touched Timbertooth in the Onaran Plains, the storm-touched Otak in the Azure Span, and the storm-touched Blue Feather in the Primalist Future area of Thaldrassus. Up to now, we haven't been able to fully test or even find these pets, but be on the lookout once Season 1 begins in mid-December, which is when these special zone events are expected to roll out. That appears to be all the wild capturable pets we know about at this point. WoW community member Dragons After Dark has prepared some really helpful zone maps, which mark some of the known locations of wild pets, and with her permission, I've linked to those resources below. When the Elemental Storm events begin to appear with the start of Season 1, in addition to finding those elusive wild pets, there will be four distinct pets that you might luck into as world drops. These include the Echo of the Cave, the Echo of the Depths, the Echo of the Heights, and the Echo of the Inferno. These will likely be tied to the nature of the active storm. Sandstorms for the Echo of the Cave, Snowstorms for the Echo of the Depths, Thunderstorms for the Echo of the Heights, and Firestorms for the Echo of the Inferno. It's unclear what mobs these might actually drop from, but make sure to check your bags while you're out tackling these events in the world. As you travel through the Dragon Isles, you'll encounter several quests that will reward a battle pet for your efforts. During the Phase 2 pre-patch event starting mid-November prior to release, the Primal Stormling pet will be available as a reward given for the quest, A Primal Threat. If you're watching this after Dragonflight launches and you missed out on the pre-patch, check your local auction house because this pet is cageable and there will likely be extra quantities available. Once you progress the main campaign in the Waking Shores through the quest Rathion's Gambit in the Obsidian Citadel area, you'll be able to unlock the secret quest A Dragon's Day Off, which rewards this cute purple dragon whelp named Spiragos, or Spiragos. I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation. You can find this quest by speaking to Vizalia, who's tucked away at the Hissing Grotto, a whimsical, relaxing area nestled at the shore northwest of Obsidian Citadel. Vizalia is a black dragon who patrols in the air around the shore for a couple minutes before landing to take on her humanoid visage for a bit. Speak with her to unlock the quest, which requires collecting a specific variety of fine alcoholic beverages throughout the Waking Shores, for which you'll be rewarded with the purple-tinted dragon whelp. While in the Onaran Plains, be on the lookout for a quest entitled Some Call Me Bug Catcher, given by Gracus, a big old tree man. I mean, Tree Ant, who can be found lumbering around in the Shady Sanctuary area. This is a brief quest chain where you take care of some ducklings, and ultimately rescue an adventurous, albeit misguided little duckling who's run into a bit of trouble nearby. Upon completing the quest, but I am the hero of ducks, you'll get to bring adorable little pilot into your battle pet crew. At the Three Falls Lookout Encampment in the Azure Span, you'll find the troll stable master named Zanwagi. He'll offer to rehome with you Yipper, the Slyvern Kit Pet, once you complete a short but heartstrings tugging quest called the Great Shokari. As you traverse the dense forests of the Azure Span, just east of the Azure Archives, you'll find an icy patch of land called the Shiverweb Vale. Be on the lookout for a bespectacled blood elf named Lilial Dawnburst, who will offer you a spider-heavy quest chain starting with the quest Eight-Legged Menace. 
At the culmination of this chain, an ice-cubed dwarf will offer you the quest Kill the Queen, which rewards the fierce-looking shiverweb broodling pet. As you approach max level and visit the capital city of Valdraken in Theldrassus, you'll have a few quests nearby to pick up for the remaining four pets. At the extraordinarily cute Little Scales Daycare on the west end of Valdraken, speak to Jihana to pick up the quest Oh Where, Oh Where Can He Be, which is, in my opinion, a fantastic little quest chain to introduce people to battle pets. This chain ultimately rewards not only two battle pets, the cutest little baby proto-dragon named Lubbins, and the top hat wearing, trumpet sound making baby mammoth named Mr. Toots, but also rewards several helpful pet resources, including upgrade stones, bandages, polished pet charms, and even the achievement Lovin' Lubbins. Nearby, in the Emerald Enclave set in the southeast section of Valdraken, find Tender Gina to pick up the quest Garden Variety. This will lead you to the quest giver Gyrimpec who will send you on another quest chain which ultimately rewards the pet Lord Basilton. And lastly, if you find and kill the elite brown slime named Mudgatu near the Serene Dream Spa, it will drop a quest starter item that takes you through a short, humorous quest chain full of Zoolander references that ultimately rewards you with the rhinestone-spectacled living mud mask pet. There are a handful of battle pets that are collected through treasures of varying types throughout the Dragon Isles, and, in fact, most of these treasures are required for completing the Treasure Hunter of the Dragon Isles meta achievement. In the Waking Shores, you'll be able to secure both the Roseate Hopper and the Azure Frillfish. The Roseate Hopper is being held hostage in a cave by a surly, possessive Hornswog just northeast of the Ruby Life Pools area. Now, this swag isn't just going to let anyone into its cave, but there just so happens to be an open book laying nearby entitled Observant Riddles, a Field Guide, that gives clues to three items you can collect to distract the swag from its guard post. If you like a good riddle to solve, this one should be easy enough for you, and in that case, skip ahead to the next chapter of this video. But if you're like me and kind of a dumb dumb about riddles, here's a quick guide. You can collect the Adventurer's Lost Soap Bar from inside a small wooden bathtub near waypoint 39.6, 84.7. You can grab the well-preserved bone on the top floor of the Broken Tower in the Life Vault Ruins near 66.2, 55.3. And lastly, retrieve Marmoni's Prize tucked near some storage boxes behind a tent in the Dragon Scale Base Camp near 47.7, 83.6. When you combine all three items back near the book, you'll receive the Observant Riddle Treat, which you can then feed to the Possessive Hornswog to permanently distract it from its station. Once you're past that creepy swog and into the cave, open the hidden Hornswog hostage crate to collect your happy, hoppy little roseate hopper pet. The Azure Frillfish requires a bit of RNG to require. Once you unlock Renown 2 and 5 with the Dragon Scale Expedition, you'll get access to treasures called Expedition Scouts Packs and Disturbed Dirt, respectively. If you're lucky enough, from one of those treasures, you'll get a Guide to Rare Fish to drop, which reveals the location of the Bubble Drifter out on the eastern coast of the Waking Shores. As you approach the marked location, you'll see a fragrant plant nearby. Loot that plant to receive a 5-minute buff, which you will need to interact with the Bubble Drifter, a fish swimming laps in the shallow waters nearby. Click on the Bubble Drifter and you will receive the Azure Frillfish. Next up is the Viridescent Duck in the Onaran Plains. In the main town of Marukai, find and pet Ludo, one of the many friendly, pettable Bakar in the zone. He'll be padding around the area with a map in his mouth. If you have trouble finding him, Typing slash tar Ludo and applying a target marker works really well to spot him. Ludo rewards your affection with a stash map, which, when used, reveals a treasure location at the convergence of three rivers just to the east of Marukai. There, you'll find a dirt mound which, when looted, delivers you a slightly chewed duck egg with a duration of three days. After the three days expires, it hatches into the viridescent duck. In the Azure Span, the Black Feather Nester Pet can be acquired by traveling to a large fallen evergreen tree near the Trader's Rest area at 26.5, 46.25. Atop the hollowed trunk, you'll find the Pepper Hammer, 
a bird circling near a glowing stick object. Below, you'll find a puddle of tree sap that you can collect to give you a buff that will make the stick an interactable object. And once clicked, the nearby pepper hammer will swoop down, allowing you to click on it to collect your very own black feather nester pet. The final two treasure pets that we're aware of are in Thaldrasses. Just to the south of Tearhold Reservoir at waypoint 49.4, 62.9, you'll find a hungry flying squirrel called Acorn Harvester. Under nearby trees, you'll see acorns glowing on the ground which, when collected, give you the appropriately titled Acorn Buff, which lasts for 5 minutes and allows you to feed the Acorn Harvester. Simply click on the squirrel and you'll be rewarded with Chestnut. And lastly, there's a strange bear cub trapped in a blocked off cave in the Eon's Fringe area of Thaldrasis on the westernmost side of the Temporal Conflux region, so obviously our task is to rescue it. Within Eon's Fringe, you'll be bombarded with Temporal Shock, which will keep pelting you with damage until your health gets so low that nearby mages are forced to teleport you to safety, so you'll need to act quickly to secure the little bear cub. The cave is located at waypoint 52.7, 83.3, and entry can be achieved in three ways. Number one, have the mining profession. Number two, have access to the Expedition's Explosives perk at Renown 20 of the Dragon Scale Expedition. Or number three, be in the area when someone with mining or explosives happens to be there, as once the rocks are down, anyone can access the interior of the cave for a brief period of time. Inside the cave, simply click on the strange bear cub and be rewarded with Cubly. Even though you can collect additional Cublies on alts, there is no need, as he is uncageable, marked as unique, and can only be learned once. But he's very, very cute. Professions are getting a major overhaul in Dragonflight, and with them, thankfully, we'll be getting some new battle pets to collect. Blacksmiths can craft the slow-moving, anagrammy mechanical pet Alvin the Anvil once they hit Dragon Isle's crafting level 50 and obtain the plans for it. The plans are currently listed as a drop from Powerful Blacksmiths and can also be bought and sold on the auction house. One surprising tidbit is that Alvin does not count as an anvil for blacksmiths. Let's hope they fix that. Enchanters can craft the elemental Sophic Amalgamation Pet once they progress to rank 20 of the Primal Extraction subspec within the insight of the blue specialization. This will require they be at least level 25 in Dragon Isles Enchanting to unlock specializations and have enough Dragon Isles Enchanting knowledge to put into the specs mentioned to learn the recipe. Jewel crafters have a whopping 5 jeweled whelpling pets they'll be able to craft in various colors of amber, emerald, onyx, ruby, and sapphire. Obtaining the designs and the unique reagents to craft the pets will be challenging, as it requires not only renowned level 21 with the Dragon Scale Expedition and 35 knowledge points in the glassware subspec, but then there's also an RNG element to obtaining all the different color designs and reagents through Dragon Isle's treasures. In brief, when you hit Renown 21 with the Dragon Scale Expedition, you'll be awarded an Onyx Gem Cluster map from Boss Magor. When used, this map will reveal a treasure located in the Waking Shores, which will contain a glimmering Neltherite Cluster reagent for everyone, and additionally, should also contain the design of the Jeweled Onyx Whelpling pet for Jewel Crafters. To obtain the other four cluster reagents and designs is where the RNG comes in you have a chance to randomly find the other four maps when looting repeatable treasures like the Expedition Scouts packs, Disturbed Dirt, and the Magic Bound chests in the Dragon Isles. The Ruby Gem Cluster map will reveal the location for the Ruby color, Bear Termination Plans will reveal the location for the Amber color, Precious Plans will reveal the location for the Sapphire color, and Emerald Gardens Explorer's Notes will reveal the location for the Emerald color. If you're not a Jewel Crafter, you can also obtain these reagents by a similar treasure-finding endeavor once you hit Renown 21 with the Dragon Scale Expedition, and you may submit a crafting order for your own whelplings to a skilled jewel crafter. Engineers will be able to craft the mechanical duckling pet Quacky once they reach 50 skill levels in Dragon Isles Engineering, but to obtain the schematic for it, they'll need to keep up with their reputation farming, as they'll need to reach Renown 21 with the Dragon Scale Expedition to purchase it. To craft the pet, a reagent called the Quacky Modulator is also required, 
And this Soulbound reagent is also purchasable at Renown Level 21 with the Dragon Scale Expedition and can be used by engineers to craft the pet or provided by collectors when submitting a crafting order. Are you sensing a theme? Yes, Dragon Scale Expedition Renown 21 is an important Renown level for us pet collectors. The last four profession pets are related to a bind-on-use engineering item called the Zap Throttle Soul Inhaler. When used on an elite elemental mob alongside a jewel crafting consumable called an Empty Soul Cage, it purportedly has a chance to yield one of the following elemental pets. The Blaze Spirit, the Dust Spirit, the Gale Spirit, and the Tide Spirit. At the time this video is released, it's unclear if anyone using the Soul Inhaler can get a pet to drop or if they're only available to engineers, but stay tuned to sources like Wowhead for future breakthroughs. We have eight new battle pets tied to renown and reputation coming in Dragonflight. Each of the pets is purchasable for Dragon Isle supplies and a mixture of reagents or esoteric common items you can loot from various mobs around the Dragon Isles. When you hit Renown 11 with the Dragon Scale Expedition and the Waking Shores, visit Grand Pap Whiskers at the Dragon Scale Base Camp to purchase the Black Skitterbug and the Grey Marmoni. When you hit Renown 8 with the Maruk Centaur in the Anaran Plains, visit Quartermaster Husang to purchase Hoof Helper, the cute, green tinted baby thunder lizard. When you hit Renown 9 with the Iskara Tuskar, chase down Jeek the Tuscar Kid running circles around the village of Iskara to purchase the Backswimmer Timbertooth and Whiskuk. And when you hit Renown 18 with the Valdraken Accord, visit Groundskeeper Kama in Valdraken to purchase Magic Nibbler and the Crimson Proto Whelp. Also, without giving too much away and trying to avoid story spoilers as much as possible, during the Waking Shores campaign, you'll have a choice to make regarding who you think should become the next leader of one of the rather important factions in Dragonflight. While ultimately you'll be able to grind your way up to a glowing reputation with both options over time, one of them rewards the opportunity to purchase the Obsidian Proto Whelp at their third reputation rank. So be aware as you explore that zone's story and be on the lookout for a vendor named Lorena Bell to make your purchase. There are several vendors around the Dragon Isles that sell pets not tied to renown, but to basic currencies available to players. First up, we have six new battle pets that you can purchase with polished pet charms. This is the currency that's been in use since Battle for Azeroth, used to purchase not only pets, but also pet supplies like upgrade stones and bandages. There's no change to the pet currency in Dragonflight, so any remaining currency you've acquired up through Shadowlands can be used to purchase the following pets from Pachu, a Tuskar child located in the Ascara village who is surrounded by a few other battle pets you may already be familiar with. These new pets are Pistachio for 50 charms, Petal for 100 charms, the Troubled Tome for 200 charms, Jean's Lucky Fish for 300 charms, Pinky for 500 charms, and Scout for a whopping 5,000 charms. That's a total of 6,150 polished pet charms you'll need to acquire all these new pets. Sadly, with the absence of any sort of mission table and merely one pet battle world quest per day in Dragonflight, collectors short on charms will be better served by continuing to farm charms in Shadowlands and Battle for Azeroth content, where a healthy density of charms will still be available. Next up is Chip an Earth Elemental pet you can purchase from Yri's Lightfingers at the Obsidian Citadel in the Waking Shores. The items required to buy Chip are dropped from mobs you'll encounter while questing in the area. Be careful, these are common items, so you may be tempted to vendor them, but hang on to them. You'll need one Rock of Aegis Shield, two Presentient Rock Clusters, and three Element Infused Bloods. Everything but the Rock of Aegis can be listed on the Auction House, so you can either scope out the AH to find yours, or list your extras for a tidy profit. The Mallard Duckling Battle Pet can be purchased from Pakak, the fishing supply vendor stationed in Valdraken. He doesn't want gold for the duckling, he wants food. Bring him a buffet of items, including a braised brufalon brisket, a riverside picnic, 
and three faded fortune cookies, and the mallard duckling pet will be yours for keeps. And finally, Mithressa, a Drakthir vendor in Veldraken, sells a variety of items including gear, a mount, and these two pets, Stormy and Ghost Flame, for elemental overflow. This is a currency which you can acquire during the Primalist Invasion Elemental Storms. Each of the pets costs a whopping 1,000 of the overflow, but since the currency appears to be uncapped, you can grind to your heart's content once these events unlock in Season 1. As we get to the end of our list, we're left with two mysterious battle pets in the pet journal whose source we don't quite know just yet. The Bakar Companion and the Ohuna Companion are listed as available, but there's no source listed for them in the pet journal. The closest to a clue we have in-game are the two companions you can use when you reach Renown 9 with the Maruk Centaur and unlock the Call of the Hunt Level 2 perk, which allows you to recruit a companion for use during the Centaur hunts. When you speak with the Grand Hunt Trainer in Marukai, you get to choose between the Bakar Companion or the Ohuna Companion. These sidekicks aid you during the various Grand Hunts around the Dragon Isles, and it's unclear if the pets in the journal are simply remnants of a forgotten desire to have battle pet versions or not. The only achievement tied to these companions, Tetrachromancer, which is for collecting all the available companion colors, doesn't say that it rewards the battle pet versions, but that seems like it would be the most likely source to me. Again, stay tuned to sources like Wowhead for new finds after the Dragonflight launch. And finally, there are a number of battle pets introduced in the various beta builds that have since been hidden from the pet journal, but for some reason they're still in the files and flagged as hidden until learned. These secret pets may eventually be revealed in later content, or may be relegated to the graveyard of abandoned pets. I hope we get to see some of these in the future, as I'm always a big fan of numbers go up when it comes to battle pets. Well. That wraps up our look at the new Dragonflight expansion, Battle Pets. A big thank you goes out to all my fellow Dragonflight beta testers who went out of their way to search and document their findings, which contributed vital information for this video. Special thanks specifically goes to Dragons After Dark and Lazy, both of them active and extremely helpful members of the Battle Pet community. I had so much fun working alongside them to unlock a few of the secrets of the Dragon Isles pets. Which pets are you most eager to add to your collection? Do you have any theories about the hidden pets? Share your thoughts below! If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can also find me on Twitch, where I'm tiptoeing back into streaming, and on Twitter, for the moment, where I tend to post WoW-related stuff daily. Both links are below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Take care.